Welcome back to Somewhere in Between. I'm Daniel. Today I'm going to show you how to change your uh, Firefox settings. If you do all of these things, your Firefox browser will be a lot more private than it would be otherwise. Um, Firefox is considered the like the go-to browser if you if you really care about your privacy. It's the primary browser I use on, you know, whatever operating system I happen to be using at that point in time. I'm going to be using a Mac for the screen capture, but these the same thing step by step you can do on Android, on Windows, or on a Mac. Um, not on an iPhone or, or an iPad. That's another story about why you cannot, but just know that these you can't do these things on um, your iPhone. So, and then I feel like this is more of a desktop use case, anyways, really, because there are things like Firefox Focus and um, DuckDuckGo browser and even Brave, like that are more just better as far as like out of the box private. So that I feel like this is more of a desktop situation, but you can do it on Android, but not on iPhone. And we're going to be using privacytools.io. That's where I got the guide to do all this from. I think um, this site is a great place to start, and it's also um, a great place to learn more about privacy and what types of tools and apps and software is appropriate for what type of situation because you know privacy depends on threat model so like you know person a might be trying to stay private from google and facebook and you know all of the big tech companies person b might be trying to stay private from the internet service provider Person C might be trying to stay private from a, a person, like a physical person on their, you know, Facebook or something. So privacy is not the same thing to everyone. You have to determine what information you want to protect and who you want to protect it from and then act accordingly. So let's go ahead and get started. Going to preferences and go to privacy and security i like to change the um track and protection to strict because why not um i like to turn off all of this um firefox data collection and use allow firefox to send technical and interaction data to mozilla turn that off allow firefox to install and run studies turn that off and you know that you can decide which of these things you want to do based on you know your own discretion but this is just what i like to do the next stuff we're gonna do i always like to open the privacy tools guide like in another window like so you so you can see because there's so much stuff that we're about to change I go into tap on the url bar and type about colon config hit enter and then accept the risk and continue all right the first couple of things is um uh, deals with web rtc so the first thing is media dot peer connection dot turn dot disable and we're gonna change it from false to true. The second thing is gonna be media dot peer connection dot use underscore document underscore ice servers equals. We're gonna change from true to false. The third thing is media dot peer connection dot video dot enabled, and we're gonna change that from true to false and then the last one as far as the rtc stuff is gonna be media dot peer connection dot identity dot timeout and we're gonna change 
the value from 10,000 to 1. Now, um, we're going to do some more stuff that is, it's the, it's the Firefox privacy related about config tweaks. So change privacy.firstparty.isolate from false to true. The second thing is privacy.resist fingerprinting to true. And um, privacy.tracking protection fingerprint enabled. Make sure that is on true. And then make sure privacy.tracking protection.cryptomining.enabled is to true. Now browser.send underscore pings from false. Yeah, you want you want it to be false. If it's true, change it to false. The next thing, browser dot session store dot max underscore tabs underscore undo. You want to change the value from 25 to zero. And um, when you're going down the guide on privacy tools, there's a description for each of these things and what they do. Browser.urlbar.speculativeconnect.enabled. Change that from true to false. Okay, the next thing is dom.event.clipboardevents.enabled. And you wanna change that from true to false. I know this is like so much stuff for some people you know this may be m more than they need to do but you know once you set it it'll stay like this so when firefox updates your um settings will be intact so media.eme.enabled you want to set that to false now that disables the playback of DN drm controlled html5 content which if enabled automatically downloads the widevine content decryption module provided by google so if you may want to leave that on honestly if streaming video content inside the browser you know but i'll leave that up to you now um the next one is media.gmp hyphen widevine cdm dot enabled to fall and this disables the widevine content decryption module provided by google user playback of drm controlled html5 content okay, moving along media dot navigator dot enabled from true to false okay network dot cookie dot cookie behavior you want to change the value from four to one. The next one is network dot http dot referrer dot x origin policy. You want to change the value from zero to two. The next one is one right below it. Um, network .http .referrer .x origin trimming policy and you want to change the value from zero to two okay the next is web gl dot disabled and you want to set that from false to true the next one is browser dot session store dot privacy level you want to change the value from zero to two now finally at the last one network dot id n underscore show puny code you want to change that from false to true okay now we're gonna go to add-ons and there's like half a dozen they recommend and, and they're really good we're gonna start with uBlock origin i'm not gonna cover how to set the extensions up because i feel like this video is already gonna be long enough but most of these are just like you know you, you, there is no configuration but for uBlock origin there is a bit so I would refer you, I'll leave a, a, in the description, I'll leave um, 
some kind of guide somewhere on how to set eBlock Origin up. Anyways, moving along. HTTPS everywhere. This will upgrade all your web pages to HTTPS, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, which like encrypts your connection. Cause there are some sites that by default are HTTP, but they will work with HTTPS. And I think this, this basically tries to upgrade them if if that's possible if it's not possible it will it will prompt you the next one is decentralize okay the next one is cookie auto delete this will automatically erase the cookies from each web page you go to when you close the window now you can you can mark like specific web websites and and specify that you want to keep those cookies like let's say if it's a site you want to be logged into and you don't want to constantly be um logging into it then you know you would whitelist it inside of a uh, cookie auto delete but it's really helpful because you know like over on the web we get tracked in so many ways but you know, there is still a lot of tracking with cookies. Okay, now the next one is Terms of Service Didn't Read. Terms of Service Didn't Read is like a website that um, kind of like rates other websites on their privacy policies and gives it like a, a letter score like A, B, and C. And when you have this installed, you will see it like right here if the if they haven't reviewed the website in question you'll just get that question mark but a lot of sites they have and it will give you you know some information on the sites and their privacy policy so i think that's helpful the next one is privacy badger Now I'm not going to cover the um, power users um, ones, which is Umatrix and NoScript. For one thing, I don't even fully understand how to use them correctly. I mean, I can I know how to use them sort of, but anyway, I feel like it. You know, uBlock Origin and you know everything we've just done is is sufficient. With uBlock Origin, you want to turn this on in the little thingy here turn it on and then see like on, on um cookie auto delete turn on auto clean and like let's say you want to whitelist a site you would like mozilla.org if you whitelist that now cookies from mozilla.org won't be uh, deleted even when you when you close the window uh, there's one more that you can do if you want is um snowflake this doesn't really do anything for um you personally but is that it's snowflake is a new pluggable transport from the tor project if you have an uncensored connection running this extension volunteers your connection to be used as a snowflake proxy to help users unable to connect to the tor network so like if you if you add i would say do this is sort of like um helping helping other people out so that they can connect to tor because tor is like the onion router tor is like it's is censored in some places so if you have this enabled then you're kind of like allowing your connection to be your ip will not be visible to the site's users visit using your proxy as this extension will not make you an exit node. So if you know about Tor, you know like you're routed through like a number of different IPs from different people and you, you end up, what, what your IP shows up as is your exit node. So you won't be an exit node, but um, you will help people connect. Thanks again for watching this video. Be sure and uh, smash that like button if, if you enjoyed this or found it helpful. 
um if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe to the channel we'll have more videos coming out soon working on a couple of other things and if you want to learn more about privacy or just get better at it or learn you know get better at protecting yours check out privacytools.io it's a great website um anyway so yeah hope you guys have a good rest of your week